Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Training Reviews. So if you saw my previous video, I reviewed this uh, Tamron lens. It's the 17 by 28 millimeter zoom lens for Sony E-mount cameras. It's a full frame lens. If you want to check out the full review, then uh, click on the link in the description below or click on the card icon here on the top corner of your screen. And uh, today I'm going to be reviewing taking this out in nighttime conditions. So I wanted to see the capability of this lens in very low lighting. So I've asked one of my friends to come out with me and take some pictures around my area and I wanted to give you guys a highlight of how good this is in uh, those types of conditions. And I've tested a little bit about the video quality and a bit about the autofocus as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a series of pictures and I want you guys to have a look at how good it performs. Check out the lighting, how dark the uh, subject is, how colourful the backgrounds are, all this kind of stuff and uh, let me know what you think and then at the end I'll give you my review and I'll give you some voiceover of some of the other videos I've taken as well. So let's just get straight into it. So I just wanted to start off talking a little bit about the depth of field. So when you do take pictures of the subjects close up, then you do get a good blur in the backgrounds and you got the bokeh effect of lighting in the background as well. But I've noticed that in uh, very low lighting conditions, the subject is not as sharp as most of the lenses I've used in the past. You do get a good image, but the more closer you get, you start to get a distortion and a bit of blurriness of the actual person itself. So as you can see here, it's not the sharpest one but it does do a good enough job if you wanted to use this lens. Now, if you do look at this picture here, if you are going to be using this lens for portrait photography, then you have to make sure that, especially when you're using this on auto, to make sure the subject has a bit of brighter lighting on either side of the uh, body or the faces, just so that you can get a clearer image coming through. If it is quite dark and the lighting is not picked up correctly by the lens itself, then you'll have to make a lot of adjustments and you'll probably lose a bit of the uh, sharpness in the colors in the depth of field behind the subject as well. Now, if you take a look at this picture, my friend is a little bit blurry and the focus of the lens has moved to the trees in the background and it's probably picked that up based on the lighting that's coming from this tunnel as well and the people walking behind, but I've tried to focus as much as I can on my friend here, but you can see even then with the lighting coming from the tunnel, he hasn't been uh, lit up that very well and you can see it's very dark in terms of getting any type of sharpness coming through. So I wanted to check to see how the quality of the lens is for moving objects. So I took a picture of this water fountain and you can see my friend in the background as well. Now there's a variation of lighting effects here. So the water fountain as well, 
It obviously wasn't taken on any fast shutter speeds or any specific modes to capture fast movement because this was also taken on auto like all the other pictures in this video. And as you can see, the fountain is a little bit blurry and the light coming from it has washed it out a little bit. But the um, darkness of my friend in the background is not as clear as I'd like it to be, but at the same time, it's not as bad as I thought it would be as well. But the trees in the background with the lights on them, then they've actually come out very well. And I was quite impressed with that. So one thing I also wanted to try with the lens is also take pictures of food at restaurants when you're in very low lit restaurants. So it was very dark in here and I've taken a picture here of the food and it wasn't as bright as I'd like it to be. It didn't come out so strong, but I can still see the quality in the picture. It did create that little bit of depth of field, but there's no specific food mode that I actually selected the lens on or any other specific modes to sharpen the images and adjust it manually. So as I mentioned in my previous review video, this uh, lens does not have any stabilization inbuilt. So as you can see from this clip, I'm just walking with the lens and it is quite shaky. Next, I wanted to check the autofocus speeds. So when I'm really close up to an object like this branch, then I wanted to pan away, get as close as I can, pan away and the autofocus was quite well. But when I go back, it didn't pick up the autofocus. So I had to move back slightly. And then sometimes I had to move backwards and forwards just to get the autofocus to automatically get back into place. And then I can move away and get the focus off of the subject as well. So it wasn't the greatest speeds, but nonetheless, it did do a job when it did work well. Now I tried the same thing again, but with my friend. So panning between his face and away from his body, you can see that the autofocus, it struggled a little bit. At one point here, you can see that it just kept it blurry and it took a while for it to pick up. But if I pick up speed and do it a little bit faster, then you can see it still takes a couple of seconds to get focus back on his face, but it's a little bit quicker to pick up the focus of the background in the distance. So overall, I would say in conclusion, I wouldn't use this lens specifically to do nighttime photography. I can see that there'll be very much a lot of dark areas, especially when it comes to taking pictures of people. Or if you're out and you wanna take pictures in restaurants, I would definitely recommend a different lens to this one. As you can see in this picture, the colors are not as vibrant as they are in real life, but you can see the dark areas on the ground and to the bushes on the right hand side. I think there's not enough definition there and you can see from the pillars on the right hand side as well, the darkness just sort of fades into it. And from when I was looking at this, when I was standing there in real life, it looked a lot different to as you can see in this picture. So I wasn't super impressed from the low light photography capability of this lens but I will use this going forward for wide angle videos and also for portrait photography in daylight conditions and also for various other architecture and landscape photos. All right guys, so thanks for watching. I hope you found that review very useful. If you did have any other questions about the Tamron 17 to 28, then uh, drop a comment below. Otherwise, I'll put some more pictures up of the uh, capabilities of this lens on my Instagram. So do check it out at Trending Reviews. And if there's any other lenses that you want me to try for Sony E-mount cameras, then do let me know. Otherwise, I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.